Hello. Welcome back to Ashley's Homestead Adventures. And this morning we are taking Miss Velvet out to enjoy some time out in her pasture. And just doing a little barn chores this morning. You want to walk right behind me? Oh. She's not camera ready this morning. She's looking for her friend. She's never been a pasture horse. And you can totally tell when you put her out in her pasture. She's not really sure what to do with herself. I mean, even still, we've been here for, oh, almost three months and she still is not not quite sure what to do with herself with all that space and room and um so anywho we're gonna get some much needed barn chores done this morning um before i have to go to my other job and uh but what i'm gonna do right now is i'm actually gonna take you in when it's daylight and see if i can give you an update on the groom shop. Oh, it's much better. Much brighter in here. Okay, so the front room is pretty much just a staging area. Um, it's a very small space to have a construction zone in, so Excuse the mess, but Mr. Wonderful has been hard at work in here and he needs all of his tools to do all these things. So this is this is what it what it looks like. So you can see here now um, in the light that this is the bathing area and the counter will go along that wall and the bathtub will be here so that I can look out and so that people can look in that window there um, and see their dogs being washed if they want to. Um, and let's see, the electrical panel is pretty much all in. Uh, as you can see, there's wires running, you know, everywhere in the ceiling. I think that 99% of the wiring is done, um, even though you, there's still a couple lights to install. Uh, and so he's, that's a work in progress, but he's got the panel, you know, is, is up and it's amazing how much wiring it takes to run a little tiny groom shop. Um, super thankful that I have a husband that is handy. So anyway, this is it in the daylight. I never get to kind of show you guys in the daylight. Um, and not much is really, the insulation is starting to go in. Um, you know, there's not really a ton. Um, it might not look like a ton to show, but it really is. You know, every little thing is a big deal like this. I have indoor and outdoor light switches. I have all of my, um, you know, receptacles in for refrigerator, air conditioner. All this stuff takes a lot of thought and time. I'm just absolutely enamored. By the frost this morning. I'm not particularly sure why, but... I used to hate the frost. Why do you look so guilty? <laughs> do you have something you're not supposed to have? That's not possible, is it? What do you have? You have something you're not supposed to have? Maybe. It's looking a little bit like it. Oh, yes. Well, that's, that's up to you, dude. It's your digestive tract, not mine. He's got a piece of pucky in his mouth. 
and he's pretty excited about it. <laughs> so anyway, um, it's all very exciting stuff, and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm anxious to get back to work um, here on the farm. I'm anxious for a lot of things. Uh, as far as the groom shop goes, I'm anxious to start touching touching dogs and their families again by making them beautiful and helping keep the dogs healthy and happy. That's a part of who I am and I miss it very, very much. And there is a bit of a hole in my heart from uh, leaving that, you know, was, that is left there from leaving all of my clients um, in Oregon. And I'm anxious to start filling up that hole with other dogs to care and love for in my groom shop um so it's all very very exciting and mr wonderful is working extremely hard to get that done as soon as possible um but in the meantime i'm finding other work to do and one of those tasks this morning is uh, to work on getting the barn clean and so come along with me and let's see what kind of farmy stuff we can get into today Good morning, beep beeps. Good morning. Okay, there's a couple things that I need to do. These little dudes. First things first, I need to give a wormer. It is injectable. And then the second thing is, is I need to treat Mr. Bronco's head. For the fungus that he has. And so we'll see how this goes. It's almost always a shit show. I'm hoping it's not terrible today, but, and I may have to abort and wait until I get their halter out and do it with the halter. But the halter's not here right now. You guys will find out that story later. Okay, 
There we go. Only a couple mild injuries on my part. Oh dang, I didn't get his lip treated. Oh well. So that was their booster shot. And for their um, intestinal parasites and ringworm and all of that, um, what Bronco has going on the vet believes it's a fungus. And so he literally just said, just leave it be. Um, it'll go away come spring. If you really want to do something about it, then you can treat it with betadine. So that's what I've been doing and it appears to be helping. So um, that's why I continue the treatment. Oh boy, the two boys. Mr. King is really, um, hmm hormonal right now uh he's frustrated because he can't be in with his ladies and uh he's just kind of wants to play with everybody and establish his dominance and his manhood so he was just chasing the dogs back and forth while i was working on bronco you could hear the the boinging back and forth and that was him chasing the dogs back and forth and of course, the dogs could very easily just, um, jeez, he's picking on Bronco, could very easily just, you know, turn around and bite him and be like, no, you're not going to push me around, but they're Labradors, so <laughs> they're soft little chocolate morsels. Um, but anyway, getting back to him, Let's see if I can... There we go. So that is a fungus, and that is why we were treating him with betadine. Not only that, but it's just really good for me to handle him, because uh, he is still kind of wily. So anyway, um, their pen is open now, so I'm going to go ahead and get in here and get to cleaning, because as you can see, it's dirty.
Welcome to the world, little man. Yes, I know, they're hatching. This little guy is a day early. I noticed that he had pipped this morning. But nobody else has pipped and he is a day early. So he's gonna have to hang out in the incubator and wait for everybody else. Oh my goodness, how sweet is that? Yes, you hear him, don't you? There's chicks everywhere. Chicks in the barn, chicks in the house. We just came in for lunch and heard the peeping. And there's his egg. There's part of it there and part of it over there. Nobody else is pipped, so. Nice and warm in there, little buddy. You'll be fine until he comes out. I know. You have to wait. I know. You're going to be a very tired girl from here on out. Alright, well, I guess it is time to get ready for these guys to have some neighbors. So we're here in the feed room and um, I'm going to get some bedding and get these guys, get this second brooder set up. So I've added some bedding to the bottom. I like to add, you know, an inch. Plenty of bedding. Okay, so next we have, this is not a how-to, you guys. This is just what I do, and I'm just sharing what I do for my chick brooders with you in case it may help you. Um, but this is a mason jar with a chicken feeder. This is just a plastic attachment. You could buy at feed store, um, Amazon, sometimes Walmart. It goes in one side and I do magic water and the magic water will attach to a um, attached to this and it will be in the form of another mason jar and then I will put washed rocks all the way around this and it will sit on top of there. Just like this one. See all the rocks I got on the edge there? This is for the other baby chicks. But that just keeps the babies from getting in there when they're clumsy and falling in and drowning. Wait, it might be. So 
So I am using wire dog crates because I have an abundance of those, but you can surely frame um, chicken wire and, you know, with a wood frame or even hardware cloth wire, half inch, you know, if you're, if you're raising chicks in a place where you got to worry about snakes and it's summertime when the snakes are out, um, you know, you just keep in mind right now, it's January. I'm not worried about snakes. The main thing is, is I'm just worried about keeping the cats out of here when I am in the feed room, you know, working in the barn or whatever, and the door is open. So if the cats do get in the feed room, they cannot penetrate through these dog crates and that's really all I'm worried about at this time of year so and it's what I have I've used any number of things chain link gates so anyway um, I'm gonna get this light hooked up I want to show you guys what I've done here the first thing I've done is I've made sure that I've put this heat lamp to where it's got a bar running through it so it's got hooks on it and if you run it through so that you make sure you've got a bar running through it, that's the first safety precaution. The second safety precaution that I do is I actually run the cord through there, loop it back around like so, and then I put the tail through the loop so that and I tighten it all up, following it around. So that's tight, and then that's tight, and then that's tight. So now I have a knot tied around that heat lamp. So regardless if something gets up here and plays with it, or you know when the chicks start jumping, if they hit it from the bottom, um, which if they're jumping that high, then it's probably time for them to go outside and not have a heat lamp. Um, but that is a close up of what I do. And then this, is my tail that has my cord on it. And I can plug it in like so. Turn my heat lamp on. Make sure it's adjusted where I want it. I don't want it facing the plastic. affiliated with these people this is just something we picked up at the store and this thermometer is going to go right there on the floor and I'm going to watch that probably until nine o'clock um you know until before I go to bed I don't need the brooder to be going all night but uh I would like to know before the chicks come out that it's going to heat it up to the correct temperature. So I will keep an eye on that and make sure that we're getting up to the correct temperature and we'll adjust plans accordingly. Okay, now we have three. And we do have some pipping. That is what pipping is called. It's when they start pecking holes in the shells to make their way out of the shell. So that's a prime example of what pipping looks like. We have three little babies out and about roaming around inside the incubator 
and it's the reason why we leave them in this incubator as long as we can is because you don't want to change the humidity of the incubator. If you open the lid and you quickly change the humidity of the incubator, you take a chance of the lining of the shell, the membrane that wraps the baby up, uh, that's in between, like when you hard boil eggs, there's always that membrane that is around the egg when you peel it. Well, that membrane, if you change the humidity of the incubator quickly, it actually can shrink wrap them. It shrinks really quickly and it shrink wraps them. So it's best to leave your chicks in your incubator. They're nice and warm in there. It's 99.5 degrees in there. And it's best to leave them in there as long as you can. They actually eat the uh, egg, the yolk, inside the egg. And they get their nutrition from that for the period that they stay in this incubator. And so cute. They just they get up and they flop around for a minute and then they and they pass out. And then they So I imagine I'll be up all night. So I don't imagine I'm going to get much sleep tonight. We've been waiting for these babies for 21 days. But if I catch one hatching, I will video it for you guys and we'll put it on the next video. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today in the barn and getting ready for these sweet little babies. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Yours truly.